Hi everyone and welcome to the special edition of Unusual Things. This is one that I've been really excited for for such a long time. We are in Belfast Docks, the place where they actually built the Titanic. And in a moment, you're gonna look at this massive museum behind me, which is built to scale at the front of the bow of the RMS Titanic. Okay, now if you follow me, I'm going to show you the tip of where the actual bow of the Titanic laid once it started to being built. And if you remember the film, it's one of those moments. And if you look behind me, you see the pillars. We are going to walk from the front to the back of the Titanic. And you're going to be able to see how these lines show the grand size of this fantastic ship set sail from Southampton once it was built here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over to a little plaque at the side of the ship here first to show you some information so you can have a good look at yourself as well. So here we have the information board the Titanic slipway and as you can see there that's the bow that's where I was stood earlier on at the start of the video and then there's a hole right up here we'll go down it quite slowly so you can stop it pause and have a Okay, now there are obviously some tourist groups in today, so we'll try and avoid them as much as we can. But we're going to continue down and show you the outside and the inside of where the Titanic was constructed. We're just going to keep walking along, and along here are some of the tracks on the inside as well, where they used to bring all the stuff that they wanted on board the ship. If you continue to follow me, now as we come along up here, you'll see these are some of the original tracks still on the ground. And you follow me up here. This here is the actual number which was given to the Titanic before it was even constructed, SS401. And underneath are some of the original pieces of wood used to hold it up. Now as we come up here, we'll be a bit mindful because of the tourists. Here would have been the launch site where the guy got his hammer or bottle, whatever he used, we'll find out in a minute, and just launched. And then the Titanic just dropped back into the ocean. We'll show you some more of the outside. Now, we're gonna to stick to this side because we don't wanna get <laughs> in the way of the tourists. I hope you're sticking with me so far. And as you look up and see these big metal pillars either side, they would have been the ones there to support the Titanic whilst it was in this dock being built. Now these lines on the outside as well, they light up at night time. I'll just show you these. And that is the exterior outside. Of the 
night time they light up to show the full side. That's what I care about. So I apologise about the wind, but it's really noisy. But as you go through over there, you can see the funnel. I'm just trying to get away from the tourist group so that we don't have too much of me talking over him while he's doing his job. Now if you look along here, you can see where the funnels were. Best still on the first funnel earlier on. But we can carry on and we can look at the second one. Which was here. And let's give you an idea of the circumference of the funnel there. So I walk through it, stand centre. Now what we're going to do now is make our way over to the side to show you where the lifeboats are. And as you can see, there are four lifeboats, four main lifeboats on each side. This is the pier. And this was one of the main reasons that so many people lost their lives in the lack of light bulbs. And I want you to pan round and you'll see where the RMS Olympic was built, right next door to the Titanic. You can see the big pillars. Now they haven't drawn out the shape of the ship here, but you can just see the big pillars. Get an idea of the size. is amazing and it's so big it's unreal okay we continue to walk down the ship so you've got an idea so far of how big this ship was bearing in mind this ship was built many many over a hundred years ago and in today's comparison it's probably a small ship so you can see the actual back end of the ship the stern and what I'm going to do now is take you to where the actual RMS Titanic was tied up and you can see the original mooring where the ship the RMS Titanic was tied to now follow me we are going to come round now to the actual stern size of the Titanic people have left padlocks along here Usually that's a symbol of showing people's love to each other or passengers or respect. Can you imagine being on the back of that ship on a cold, icy night? And it's lifting up in the air as the fun goes down. Can't imagine. Now what we're going to do is come over here and I'm going to show you a little layout of what we've just been through our quick guide for the official layout that the Titanic Museum have put here for people to see. And I'll let you have a look at that now. So there we have it, a guide to where the RMS Titanic was built before it set sail to Southampton, then obviously on its maiden voyage, where it sadly sunk and lost all those poor lives. Now earlier on, I couldn't show you this because there were some tourists there, but now I've shown you the actual size of the Titanic and obviously the, the bow and the stern and the contents with the life rafts and so forth. What we're going to do is go back to the launching pad where it was set off from <coughs> and we're going to see all the names on there of all those poor people that lost their lives during the sinking of the RMS Titanic.
Okay everyone, so this is the final memorial plaque we're gonna look at. This is the launch pad, and here it says, in memory of the men, women, and children who lost their lives during the sinking of the Titanic. By a high star, our course is set, our end is life, put out to sea. Okay everyone, just to let you know, this column starts off with the first class passengers. And then we come on to the second class passengers. And last, by no means least, the first class passengers. Okay, so this is the side where the Olympic was sat before its docking, and here we have the crew's name who perished on the tear tank. And at the end here, it says, in memory of the eight men who died during the construction and launch of the Titanic, William Clark, James Dobbin, John Kelly, Robert James Murphy, Samuel J. Scott, unknown, unknown, unknown. We raised the monument of fame upon these banks and thus unfurled an honored scroll to Ulster's name, unequaled yet around the world. Reflections of a shipyardman, Thomas Carnival. So there we have it guys, that was our tour of the Titanic in terms of the construction size, where it was built as well. And one of the names that you may notice on the end there that lost their lives was Samuel J. Scott, the youngest, a 15 year old boy who came to work that day and we will be visiting his grave. So we have now come to the place where the dry dock is, where the Titanic came to have some of its fixtures and fittings. We are at Belfast City Centre in the Town Hall, which is just to my right there, and we have come to find the memorial uh, stone towards the victims of the Thai tank. We're going to go over there right now. This is a beautiful memorial place. It's got all the names down of everyone that lost their lives on that night. We're just going to do a quick scan so you can have a quick look. Now I'm sat at the monument of William James Perrine, who was the head of Holland and Wolf, who were commissioned to build the biggest fleet on the ocean, including the RMS Titanic. Come and have a closer look.
So here is the main Titanic Memorial in the gardens. Titanic Memorial, erected to the imperishable memory of those gallant Belfast men whose names are here inscribed and who lost their lives on the 15th of April 1912. By the foundering of the Belfast built RMS Titanic through collision with an iceberg on her maiden voyage from Southampton to New York. Okay guys, now I had to stop here because if you look behind me at this amazing mural on the wall, this is an area where some of the ship workers that worked on the RMS Titanic lived. But not only that, it goes to show how much the Titanic and what it brought to the city meant to the local people that live here, especially places like this. Now over here, they've even got almost like a key, if you like, of what is on the actual mural up there. So it's got Thomas Andrews, Harlan the Wolf's chief designer. It's got Captain Edward Smith. It's got John George Jack Phillips, senior wireless operator. And it's got Ned Parfit, the newsboy. It's also got the logo for the White Star Line, uh, Titanic and a birth in Belfast, Titanic leaving Belfast, the 2nd of April, 1912, and the Titanic's last known coordinates. So there we go guys, that's just one of the many murals that you see in and around this area of Balfour City. Just let the emergency services do their bit. Okay, we couldn't help but notice as we were continuing our drive through Balfour, this beautiful memorial of the Titanic. And again, it just goes to show how much respect the people that sailed on that ship on that fateful night have in this city.